All right, welcome back everyone. This is episode 283 of the Move Now Chiropractor. I'm here with Danny. We don't have trainer Tony in today. He is back. He's heading back to Minnesota to get back to his job working in the operating room. He shared all about that before and some fun stories last week and the week before. And this is episode, like I said, 283. We'll get rolling. We're going to talk about some marketing ideas and what we're doing to proactively boost things up in the clinic. So this is going to be a good one. You're not going to want to miss it. So hang on, roll the intro. Here we go. Here's what so many chiropractors have been searching for. How can we expand our clinical reach by finally addressing more than just the segmental component with our patients, but at the same time, not feel like we are selling out our chiropractic principles? The reality is our patients count on us to guide them. And when it comes to results, we must also address their posture and their movement. The verdict is out. Patients have spoken, and this is what they want and what they need focusing on functional movement and corrective exercise. So how do we practice in a way where our community is engaged, excited, and seeking us out because of this comprehensive results-based approach? That's the goal we've all been searching for, and this podcast will show you how. My name is Dr. Todd Pickman, and welcome to the Move Now Chiropractor. Intro is rolled. Move Now Chiropractor is happening. All right, well, we were trying to think about a topic to cover like literally 30 seconds ago. <laughs> and, and you can tell we don't have this all pre-scripted out. We got lots of stuff we can talk about. We can pretty much figure it out on the fly. So we figured we'll just share what we're doing in our clinic because I, I asked Danny, I said, well, what are you hearing from the different clinics and the doctors that you're talking to week by week in their practice? To which she said, that a lot of doctors are seeing a trend and a decline in patients committing to care or patients continuing care. Yeah. We've seen that to an extent too. And I'll be honest, I feel like in our clinic, and if any of our staff are listening to this, we love you all. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I feel like anytime we see any sort of decline in numbers, unless we have zero new patients and people are just not committing to care. I feel like we've been around long enough. We have a big enough patient base that if our numbers are really declining week after week after week, things are being missed systems wise. And in our case, I've talked to Danny about this quite a bit. The systems were being followed, but maybe just not as effectively as they could have been done. Correct. So meaning people leaving without appointments, people not pre-scheduling or scheduling more than a visit at a time. Like that's such basic stuff that I would expect that if we have a staff member that is not getting the result, meaning like if we're not seeing some sort of clear data on our end to see they're not getting the result, that they're going to report to us they're not getting the result and they need more training. That wasn't really happening in this case. We put some different people in front office positions and we've started to see things trend differently pretty quickly. And, you know, I've, I've practiced now almost 20 years and I just like, I just feel like every time I've seen these little trends, it's usually not something crazy in the universe, although there's plenty of crazy crap in the universe right now. Mm -hmm. So I did think maybe that was it. Yeah. But uh, I think a lot of times it's something going on with just the systems not being followed effectively, the communication not happening, patients maybe need a talking to from the doctor, maybe someone else in the clinic with more of an authority type of presence needs to talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so ultimately we, we went through aggressively and said, okay, what patients were on the schedule last week and the week before that are not on the schedule this week or next week? We started getting a list together and then some of those people I talked to and I would just approach the patient because they didn't have a bunch of future appointments. They were scheduling visit by visit, Yeah, you know? So like I would have the conversation with them in the adjusting room. I'd say, Hey John, so I noticed you don't have any future appointments or I noticed you've been a, been scheduling visit by visit and I get that it might be hard to schedule out sometimes, but I'll tell you what, if you can schedule a handful of appointments, you always come in on Monday at 3 PM. If you could just, if you could schedule five or six appointments, that would be really helpful for us. It's helpful for you too. You don't have to stop at the front desk on the way out. Saves us a lot of time and energy on, on, on our part as well. So, I mean, truly it is something that we really appreciate. Could you do that? And like, no one says no. Everyone yeah. just says yes. So 
can the person at the front desk do that same thing? They should. Yeah, they, they should be able to say the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. And if a patient gives them an objection, they can just respond and they can say, okay, I get it. How about we do this? And you try to overcome their objection. Yep. You know, well, I don't know what I'm doing every Monday at three o'clock. Tell you what, why don't we go ahead and get you on the schedule? You get an appointment reminder. And if it doesn't work, you can reach back out to us. You get a text message reminder and everything. You let us know that time is no longer going to work and we'll work with you to adjust it versus they leave without an appointment and now they're on the recall list and now we're hunting them down via recall Mm -hmm. and it just creates all of this work. And then more than just the work that it creates, we then look at our schedule and our schedule is anemic. You know, we're like, wow, next week we dropped 20%. What, why is that? Because ideally you should be able to look at your schedule. You should see what you saw this week and next week you should have about the same number, if not more, it should not drop down 20% week by week. No. So if that's happening, you have a, people are not scheduling out problem. Mm -hmm. And in this model of care that we do corrective care, people are going to have future appointments. They understand the importance of chiropractic. It's not, it's not a, I come in when I have pain type of practice model. You know, I, I can imagine those practices are frustrating all the time because oh, yeah. you just have to get new patients all the time. And it's like your focus is, oh my gosh, I need, you know, 10, 15 new patients every single week just to sustain because we only see people three or four times. And there's people who practice like that, which I, I would never want to practice like that because one, I'd feel like, man, you're, you're like a hamster on a wheel. And then two, it just doesn't, I don't think that's fulfilling. I think that's practicing a Western medicine version of chiropractic. Yep. You know, it's like, it's just an expensive aspirin. It's not to fix anything. It's just a bandaid. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you hurt. Let's crack your back. So you don't hurt anymore. Come back when you hurt again. So for those of you chiropractors out there that are having some of those issues, one, I would reevaluate what is your philosophy of chiropractic? What are you doing in office? What is your goal with the patient? Uh, Years ago, I remember when Dr. Miles Bodzin and Holly from Cash Practice came out to one of our impact events, they did a presentation and I remember in their presentation, which they always do great presentations, but what one of them, the thing that resonated, and I feel like my mic is super loud, maybe just, when they came out and they spoke, they talked about that patients quit when they don't have goals mm-hmm. and when they don't have measured check-ins, you know, like showing them here's why you're here. And in our system, we have goals along the way. We start with the wellness score. And then let's see, what are other metrics that we measure with patients as they go through care? Um, their movement assessments back in the back. Yep. All they're doing with that. Uh, re-exams yep. along the way. And then check-ins with them just verbally. Mm-hmm. Uh, the success in their 12-week transformation journal, how they're doing with that. Yep. So those are some very visual check-ins with the patient for sure and then in a corrective care model where you're doing curve correction the big one that the patients focus on quite a bit is a post Mm x-ray so you have pre and post Mm x-ray the important part about that on a side note and i've talked about this before is the importance of not putting all your clinical eggs in one basket if in 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 chiropractic biophysics when i learned cbp and i'm seeing the curve correction stuff and what you could do for a patient I, I got so excited about that that I forgot to talk to patients about any other metrics of their care. And I almost put like, oh, you're functioning better and you're feeling better and all of this stuff. You've had chronic pain for 10 years and that's gone. I kind of forgot to really emphasize how awesome that was. And everything went into what does your x-ray look like? Mm-hmm. And then when their x-ray would just change a little bit or maybe not change as much as they anticipated, even though their whole life has transformed, the patient's like, oh my gosh, this is a waste of time. Yeah. This is a big failure, you know, so don't put all your clinical eggs in one basket. We're not saying, okay, put everything on your x-ray. That's why we use the cash practice wellness score. If you're not familiar with that, it's like a report card Mm -hmm. and it gives the patient a score like a, you know, you got a 65% D Yep. and there's 21 different parameters that we measure. We measure all the stuff initially. We remeasure it at their, at the end of their first phase of care. So after typically 25 visits after 12 weeks and our goal is to improve it 10 to 15 points, depending on where they start. And then we celebrate that when they 
make that improvement or if they don't make the improvement, the patient typically knows why and they're first to admit it. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, I missed appointments. I didn't do my home care. I wasn't pushing really hard. And then we turn that frown upside down and say, well, how do you do better now moving forward? Great. That was just, you know, in, in your case, because maybe you were more acute longer or it was harder to do traction or some of the exercises, this was the conditioning phase for you. Yeah. Even though we were shooting for more change, everyone starts at a different point, wasn't possible for you. So now as we move forward, you have all this momentum, we'll capitalize on it, we'll move forward. So it's like always teaching the patient that this is not, it's not a sprint, but it's very much a marathon, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's an important thing for people to understand about just health. Like health is not, okay, I got healthy, now I'm there. Yeah. You know, it's like you have to work on it every single day for the rest of your life. And all of us start at different points. So you might have, you know, foods you're cutting out. You might have exercise you're adding in. If you have spinal issues, you have things you're improving in your spine, of course, which is the foundation of what we do as chiropractors. So we started with the topic, just to come back to it, we started with the topic of like numbers dropping in a clinic. Mm -hmm. And the first thing would be, what is your philosophy in your clinic? Yeah. You know, I mean, how do you practice? Why are your patients there? And I think on some levels you have, you know, different practice management groups and people that are like, well, people just need to realize like this is their number one priority in life. Well, you know, with our whole economy and everything that's going on, some people are in a situation where they, they're faced with expenses have gone up, pay has not increased enough to compensate for it. And so something gets cut out of their life. What do they cut out? They look at chiropractic as a commodity. Right. You know, like getting your nails done or something. Mm -hmm. Right. If someone's not already there to change that and prioritize and cut other things out and put chiropractic higher, that's a tough thing to do when you're in a phase of crisis. And, but in some cases, people just literally can't afford it. And, 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 uh, you know, something that Dr. Fred DiDomenico at Elite Coaching taught me amongst a lot of things, but it always has sunk in my mind is that you always qualify someone's desire because without desire, there's never any resources. There's never any money. There's never any way. If someone doesn't have a desire to actually get healthy, they'll come up with every excuse in the book. Mm -hmm. But if someone really has a desire, like they're like, man, I want to be here. I know how important this is, but I literally cannot put food on the table for my family. We will help them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll be like, Let's figure out a payment option. Let's let's figure out if we need to help you out with some level of care. I mean, yeah. and you know, here's what you can do in exchange. Just keep on spreading the message of chiropractic, you know. Tell your friends and family and your yeah. coworkers, you know, if you can't afford care, maybe someone else you know is a, in a better situation and they need care and you can connect the dots between them and us so they can get help, mm-hmm. right? So having more of those conversations, I think, is a huge thing. Um, Something I haven't done in a long time that I'm starting to do now because as I saw our numbers drop, which this week now they've already come back up again as we've reorganized some stuff with people doing some tasks in the front office, which, you know, at this moment, I, I don't know if that's exactly what it is or if it is just some things in the universe with like the same thing you've heard from doctors of people cutting back on care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I can't make a totally fair assessment just sitting here right now, but I, my gut tells me that there was some stuff missing at the front. We have more authoritative voices there now it's helping, but on the same note, what we decided to do, which we have not done in a long time is we're doing a targeted marketing approach. Like we've just done hardly any marketing. Yeah. Like forever, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a a lot of chiropractors, that's a big part of their thing is like marketing all the time. And I did that when I started the practice and I just, I've pretty much up until a couple months ago was at like pretty much full capacity of the schedule that I wanted to be at. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have a need to, I mean, in hindsight, maybe I should have kept doing it and then pushed those patients to Dr. Zach and he could have been bursting at the seams, you know, but Anyway, I just didn't because it's like the time and the energy. I I said, okay, well, I got my stuff in the clinic, move now, family, you know, other activities, right? So anyway, what are we doing now for marketing? 
that's the part you've all been waiting for 15 minutes in. Now we're going to tell you. <laughs> all right. So Danny, share, share what you went through with the team yesterday. Cause yesterday was Tuesday. You went in, did like a little crash course training with the team. So re- recreate that for everyone listening. Okay. So yesterday was Monday and we had Wait, yesterday was Monday. Yeah. Oh, today's Tuesday. Oh, wow. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I thought today was Wednesday for a second. Okay. never mind. Today's Tuesday. Yeah. All right. Um, so Monday I went in. You're like, first off, yep. let's talk about what day it is. <laughs> she slipped that in there like in a really nice way. She's like, you're senile and it's actually <laughs> Tuesday today. All right. Good. So Monday is usually our big team meeting training day. So you and I had discussed some marketing ideas that we could do and you discovered your handy dandy marketing manual that you made several years ago. So we pulled that back up, printed copies for all of the staff members. And then we went in, uh, told them our ideas. So our main idea that we're going to be doing right now is going to the local businesses and asking them if we could drop off a business card box to win a free lunch for their business. So if somebody has a business card, they drop it in, they have a chance to win a free lunch on us. Uh, for us coming in and talking to them about what we do and what sets us apart from other chiropractors. They don't have a business card. We have a little slip that they can put their information in there, slip it in the box. A lot of places that we're targeting are like smoothie places, juice places, um, healthy restaurants, stuff so like, like that. So, so it's it's basically yeah. food establishments primarily. Yeah. 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 And, and the exchange in letting us put our drop box in there is... When we do pull a winner for the free lunch, we are going to purchase from them directly Right for that. Right. So this is something we did years ago, and we would have all these little drop boxes all over, the little cardboard boxes. We ordered them on online, some mm-hmm. drop box something. Well, not drop box. Drop box is like the whole voting thing. Um, like mm-hmm. lead box. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, le- yeah. lead box. So I, I think leadboxes.com might be the site we went to or something. But anyway, so you bought these boxes. You assemble them, you put a little graphic on it. So we have these little, you know, laminated things that we'd Velcro on there, right? Yeah, like, I'll, yeah I'll attach a picture. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. We, 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 we had all this stuff totally created. We have like a mar- marketing room in our clinic that's with all our kettlebells and stuff. And so we have all this marketing stuff there. We just haven't used it in a long time. And so the boxes get set up. We have a whole script and a process of how the staff goes and approaches the business because it, you don't talk to the like girl at the smoothie counter that, you know, just started working there. Yeah. You, you try to talk to their manager or someone mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it, it has to be worded for their benefit as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like, look, lots of people come in here. They're looking, you know, obviously it's a healthier demographic of people that come in here. We're also in the business of health and wellness. We frequent your establishment. We want to support, we want to support a local business. So we wanted to come in and see if you'd be willing to allow us to put this here in an exchange We're going to pick winners, you know, as often as we can. And when we do, we will use your goods and services to cater the event that we do. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win, right? How cool is that? And if people say no, you just figure out how to overcome their objections or you find out what their objection is. So we have like a whole process of that. Um, And this is all walked through. Like we've, we've ironed this out pretty well. And then what happens is you get these leads so then like once a week, you start, you send staff out to these establishments to check on the leads. So they go, they open the box, they see how many leads are in there. And then they start to find out like, oh, this place only produces two per week. This place produces 20 per week. And I remember when we would do this, they'd come back with stacks, rubber banded, labeled. Okay. And then they'd go through them and you basically go through these leads and you see people that have their multi-level marketing home business. You're like, uh, not really a candidate, right? But you see other places like, oh, I work at a bank or I work here, I work here. And you're like, yep, those are great candidates. And then you can go through and you can pick winners from there. Okay. And you know, a little secret, they can all be winners. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you can pick like 10 winners out of 20 cards. Okay, cool. Because we make the rules. It's our game. Yep. And the cool thing is then we call that business up. We call the person. We say, hey, Mary, calling, call, this is Emily from Gonsted Spine and Wellness. And I'm calling because you entered a drawing last week and I was calling to tell you, you won. You're one of the winners. Great. And the person's like, oh my gosh. And they scream and like, (laughs) I never won anything. And they start, no, you know? And so usually people are like, wait, what? 
what did I do? And they're like, oh, you put your business card in at this smoothie place or at this place. Mm -hmm. And so if you are the person to talk to, or if there's someone else you can connect us with in your, you know, it looks like you work at a bank in your branch. It's, it, is there someone you can transfer me to and I can tell them about it and tell them how much of a rock star you are that you won free lunch for everyone? Mm -hmm. And then we have a process of explaining what it is. And, and it's, an, it's a thing called free lunch on us. So flu, F-L-O-U. <laughs> yep. Free lunch on us. Mm -hmm. And so then what we do is we set those up. And the goal, like back in the day, we used to do, I mean, back in the day when we first built the clinic, like I was doing like two or three of those a week. Right now, if we can do one, or maybe two a week, like set up maybe four to six per month. That one, it, it's fun to do. I mean, honestly, I like doing it. It's fun walking in with a group of people, educating them on what true health is. I haven't done one of those in a while. So I'll tell you, I need to update it a little bit because with the whole COVID thing, man, there's so much, there's so much content to talk oh, yeah. about. There's so much to talk about, you know, and just because for, for like the first time, ever in my lifetime, I feel like you had a solid two and a half, three years where people were talking about health all the time. And it's like, most of them didn't know what the hell they were talking about. Nope. So, so you have all these people like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to preach to you about health and go and get your experimental COVID shot. And they, they are the person that, you know, eats the crappiest food, like, you know, smokes, like, like j j just does all these things that does not give them any sort of leg to stand on on preaching to others about what health is. Yeah. You know, and then you have chiropractors. It's like your entire life has been dedicated to health and wellness. And our ears are perking up when we hear this whole thing coming out. We're like, wait a second. So we're supposed to do this and take this and that's a good idea. And so we were some of the first people to be very skeptical of mm -hmm. this whole plan. So anyway, uh, we go in, we do that with the drop boxes not drop boxes, lead boxes. Yeah. There's no cheating involved here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. There's no Facebook involved here. Mark Zuckerberg. All right. Um, that was strategy number one for marketing. Mm -hmm. what, what was the second thing? The second thing that we had talked about was some internal events for the office. So doing a food drive in November, doing a coat drive in December to market that to our patients so our patients can tell their family and friends that we're doing this cool thing for November, December. If you bring in X amount of perishable, non-perishable goods, then you can get your initial new patient exam for X amount. Gotcha. So we haven't worked out all the details on that yet. Yeah. We'll figure out what that special offer is, yeah. but it'll be a special offer. It'll be a thing where we will donate something to a good cause and that will be an in-office event. But another thing, Naya gave me a list yesterday, which I need to go through and as much as we want to go out in the community and look for businesses to potentially do these lunch events at, we also can look at our own patient base. Mm -hmm. Which we did put a box up front too. Oh, cool. For our patients to drop in. And then like you said, the list, mm. the staff went through, um, the patients who were coming in this week looked at where they work, all that stuff. So we got a list of good candidates that we can talk to for patients to see if they would be interested in that as well. Yeah. And, you know, in that and, and really there's a wide variety of people who can be candidates as far as like what kind of business, but the lowest hanging fruit, like the easiest least barrier of entry is if you have a patient that you're like, wow, you have stellar health insurance. Okay. It's not like it's only all about insurance, but that does make it easier for someone to say, mm -hmm. Oh, it only cost me $20 to come in and get a workup. Okay. I'll come get a workup. And then they at least get through the door so they can be exposed to this level of, of, of care. So we look at, okay, what company do you work at that, provides great health insurance. Oh, it's this place. We should probably go target that place and talk to them and say, you have a bunch of employees. You guys have great benefits for this. This is a huge preventative to prevent injury and prevent sick days and all of this stuff with your team. Cause as the HR person or the wellness coordinator, that's what they want. They want their team to be healthy. They want them to feel cared for. And so it's not like they're going to say, no, we don't want you to utilize our insurance benefits. Like they're like, no, if you can keep our team healthy, yep that keeps our company working and makes it easier for everyone. Mm -hmm. So then those are the places that we're going to set up. So I have a list of, I don't know, 30 or 40 different businesses that I need to go through and put my two cents in on which ones I think are, are good ones. And then there's a script for that. We then call them up and we're going to have one of our team start calling them once we get that list together. 
So the goal is once we, we kind of briefly went through it yesterday and, and filtered out some of them, but the goal is to have the front desk speak to them face to face when they oh, come okay, in, first. because we do have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that since makes, we do have yeah. the box up front, it's kind of a, a segue into that conversation. And then once the girls up front plant that seed, they're going to send you guys a chat in the back to let you know, like, Hey, we just talked to so-and-so about this. So that way you can round out the conversation. There you go. Yeah. That's a better plan. So, so then if like John who works at Costco or something, right. Comes in, mm -hmm. which Costco, by the way, does have good benefits for mm -hmm. their, their employees. So then, you know, you talk to John, you say, Hey John, we're doing this thing at different businesses. We, and we have done it before at Costco a long time ago. So you can even tell them, you know, we've done this in the past. It was great. It was fun. It's been a while since we've done it. Do you guys ever have anyone come in and talk about injury prevention, health and wellness, like stuff like that at work? Yes, no, maybe. Do you know who we would talk to to get something like that set up or see if there's an interest in that? Can you, can you connect us with that person? And then ideally what we do, and then this is what we have this somewhere too. And, and granted, like we just started this yesterday as far as pulling this out, brushing off the cobwebs and getting it worked out. So when we get it worked out, we have it all ready to go system step-by-step. Step. We have a template that you would send them email. Mm -hmm. So we would tell John, we would say, Hey John, what I'm going to do then, if this is okay with you, I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to send you this email, gives you the details of what we do. If you can forward this on to Susie or whoever you just told me is the HR person and even better yet, if you could forward it, but if you could attach me to the email as well and make like a digital introduction, I can take it from there and I can explore and see if that's a good fit. And then John's like, yeah, I can do that. No problem. So we send them the email. We then even ask John, can you confirm real quick that you got the email? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Hey, if you know Susie's email address, if you could forward it on like, well, it's top of the mind, that would be great just because it is something that we are trying to see if we can get this scheduled before the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So create a little bit of urgency because if you don't and you send the email to John, John has the best intentions, but he's going to forget about it. Yep. It's going to get lost in a sea of emails and then he's not going to do it. So you have to just be really good with like, you know, not feeling pushy, but getting the job done, you know? Yeah. Right. And then, we should do is have some kind of like incentive for like patients that set up a talk or something. We enter them, we give them 10 tickets in our yeah. upcoming. Yeah. Since you know, we're doing the raffle, that's going to kind of be the, the incentive. Right. Which on a little side note too, this is just stuck in my mind because a compliance person told me this a long time ago. Oh, yeah, I forgot. This. yeah. Which I, I don't know if this matters in different States. So if you're in a different state listening to this outside of Idaho, can, can you comment uh, if you're watching this on our, our, our YouTube video or I don't know if you can comment on pod. Yeah, you can comment on podcasts. Mm -hmm. You can comment. Does this matter anywhere else? And here's what this is in Idaho. I was told you can't call it a raffle cause you have to have like a license for a raffle. So you call it a prize drawing. I mean, lame semantics, but apparently that's what you have to do. I don't know. So anyway, prize drawing, prize drawing. It's, it's been programmed know. because like I would say raffle and they'd be like, no, you can't say that. <laughs> so, it's like the holy water to a vampire. <laughs> you know, when I hear it, I'm like, ah, prize drawing. <laughs> okay. So prize drawing. So anyway, those are a couple of ideas that do not include running Facebook ads or really spending money. Um, I mean, you're just going to spend money on lunch, but you're going to have an audience. Mm -hmm. You have to do some footwork. It's like what I think of as just guerrilla marketing. Like you're out in the community doing stuff. It's honestly been the most effective thing I think that we've ever done because it's face to face. People are not used to face to face anymore. Everything's just so, you know, automated, which mm -hmm. is like good in some sense, but in other sense, it, it, it's good just to get out there and, and talk to people. Yeah. Build those relationships. Yeah, totally. And when you have a big team like we do, like we, we have a staff and they have hours that they can put in and go do stuff and, mm -hmm. and they all have different talents with us. Like we, we have some newer people on the team that are really excited about doing the community outreach thing, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. So we're, we're speaking to some of their, you know, unique interests. Cause like sometimes you, you'll have staff that it's like literally going and talking to a business is like getting up on stage and talking to a thousand people mm -hmm. like in their mind, yeah. like it freaks them out. 
And so forcing that person to go do it is probably not going to result in the best thing. No. Now, ideally, you don't have people like that on your team because they probably are afraid to confront other things that need to be confronted as well. I don't think we have anyone that's like that terrified on our team, but we have people that just really wouldn't be their most favorite thing to do. And other people that are like, oh, I love doing this. So you take the, I love doing this people and you task them with that. Mm -hmm. You take the other people that don't love it as much. They can crunch the data. They can help do the reporting. Maybe they can do the phone calls, follow up, email, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But we'll keep you posted on how it's going. We're, we're, we're literally like launching it this week because what you're, you're, you're going in after this to go through a little bit of training again with them and then they're going to spread their wings yep, and so fly. So this afternoon they're going to go out and okay. place some boxes. We've got three people going out today. Dang. Okay. All, All right. in different, you know, in their specialty with what they're interested and, in. And like a key thing too is to have them be able to read someone so that if someone's just saying yes to like make you walk away, you don't want them just to throw it away when you leave. Mm -hmm. So like literally like have them be able to, even if they need to say it as a joke, like, Hey, look, if you don't want to put it here, that's fine. Like, you know, I don't want you just to say yes and then throw it away the second I walk out the door. Like if they have to say that, um, and then also let them know that they'll be coming in next week to check on it mm -hmm. so that that person, you know, and, and some people are not going to be interested and that's okay. You know, like, if someone came into our clinic and had something like that, but if it was like, if it was someone that we wanted to get behind, I'd be totally fine with it. I'd yeah. be like, okay, cool. Let's do it. But if it's someone coming in and they're like, we want to advertise, I don't know, something that just has nothing to do with what we do, not congruent at all. I'd be like, no, sorry. Yeah. Like go talk to the fast food place across mm -hmm. the street, you know? So anyway, what else? Like other marketing stuff that we've done in the past, we've, we've done Facebook ads. It, it's really primarily our, our our associate doc has played around with Facebook ads. He's done that. And it, it's, come in, it's come in phases of it being good. Um, but, it, but, you know, at a certain point it loses momentum and then you have to like recreate it and do something different. So I'm not saying Facebook ads are bad and online marketing is bad. I think it's great. I think the better thing to do for online marketing, which I have not gotten back into doing yet, is lots and lots of content creation. Mm -hmm. Just do like helpful stuff. And that's something that Chris Burfield teaches and talks about as well Is like the best way to show people that you actually care about them and want to help is give them good information that helps them. So you give free information that helps them. Here's how you shovel properly. Here's how you, you know, pick up your kids properly, or here's how you just, you, you do all these little how to do things with a really soft call to action at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, Hey, if you found this helpful and you or someone else needs help, give us a call and come in. We'd love to meet you, you know? And then on Facebook, you can do a bunch of those and you can be, so, so it's called Goodwill, mm -hmm. right? So like, like a Goodwill campaign, you do a bunch of Goodwill campaigns and then you can target the people that are watching those Goodwill videos and then you can target those people and then you can show them a video down the line that's more direct of, hey, you're seeing this video because you've watched how to shovel, how to pick up your kid and how to do this, right? So obviously you're interested in these helpful tips. Sounds like you might have something going on. We'd love to meet you. Here's what we're, you know, here's what we're doing and we'd love for you to take advantage of it. Here's what, you know, like what, whatever. Okay, I'm just shooting from the hip, but then you send them to more of like a link or something to opt in. So anyway, and asking for referrals. You can ask patients for referrals, mm -hmm. you know? I haven't done that in a long time. Um, I mean, I did it last week with a family and their whole family came in yesterday. So, cause I connected the dots for them. You know, I was seeing two of their kids and then I'm like, okay, mom and dad haven't checked you in a while, mom, dad, I haven't seen you in years. So that like the parents were existing patients from before, but they had another little kiddo that hadn't been checked yet. We had one that was old enough to get x-rayed that wasn't x-rayed yet. So we x-rayed them. Found some pretty interesting stuff on x-ray too. He's three and a half years old, has a pretty significant short leg, big thoracic translation, big head translation. So lots of asymmetry in his posture that definitely caught the parents' attention. Like they're like, wow, I'm glad we took x-rays. Because mm -hmm. you can start fixing that stuff at a young age in a way faster fashion than you can when you're an adult. Um, what else? What else, Danny? Take it away. I'm talking too much. <laughs> hey, do you see our mugs? Look at our mugs. They're pretty nifty. So if you're listening to this and you don't see our mugs, Linda, my wife, 
surprised me by putting six of these on my desk. Like we're going to have six people on a podcast at some point. So <laughs> I, I put four out of the way, put some water in it for Danny. All right. It says move now. And then mine has all the little logos on it. So we have these custom mugs that are pretty cool. That's so cool. You know, it makes it look more official. Oh, and the shirt behind. <laughs> There's a shirt that's hanging on the TV behind me, and it actually says, oh, proud, proud boss, right? Yeah. Proud, proud boss, boss of these three stooges, and it's Jenna, Danny, and Emily, because <laughs> last week they hijacked the podcast and did a, a, like a happy birthday tribute thing, which was really cool. So if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to that and hear how much everyone loves me. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, it was... It was very thoughtful. Very cool. It was a lot of fun. It was it was really, really yeah. nice. I like it. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, I don't know. Anything else to round this episode out? I mean, like, what do you what are you planning on doing specifically when you go in and finish up the training today before you send everyone out? Well, number one, we're gonna role play. I wanna see how they handle a conversation, how they're gonna handle some of the ejections and just go over with them. If you start to sense this body language, that body language, what are you going to do? So it's going to be a lot of role playing. Make sure that they understand the script, what we're doing, what the purpose is. So it's going to be a lot of quizzing. Okay. And then on a side note too, like depending on where the conversation goes, we could even come do a lunch event for them. Yep. For that business. Mm -hmm. And then trying to collect anything that they have. Hey, do you have any coupons or upcoming events or anything like that? We love to put this together so we can give this to our patients. And I think somewhere in the script, it's something to the extent of, you know, hi, I'm I'm Paul from Gonset Spinal Wellness. It's a, it's a big wellness clinic here in town. We take care of hundreds of patients. We see lots of people all the time. And we wanted to branch out to a couple of local businesses. I drive by here all the time or I use you guys all the time for smoothies or whatever. And so we got together and voted and said we should come in and chat with you. Like it, like that should be the intro. It should be something that's like personable to them. Yeah. Right. Not like, hi, would you like to donate and do, you know, <laughs> and then you sound like you're just going door to door to door. It should be like, no. We specifically came in to talk to you guys. Mm -hmm. It came up at our meeting yesterday. Like they should, it should be something like that, right? Right. And then it's like, hey, are you the person to talk to you about? Is there someone else? And then they might say, oh, that's Mary. You got to come back. She's only here on Wednesdays. Okay, great. Make a note. Boom. Come back on Wednesday. And then someone's going to be like, hey, Wednesday, can I break away real quick and do that? Yep, sure. Let's cover for you. You go break away. Mm -hmm. And so it's like something that Grant Cardone talks about in the sales process. Grant Cardone is like a, I mean, you probably, do you know who Grant Cardone is? Never, no. Mm -hmm. Cardone Zone. It's a podcast. Some people don't like him because he's, you know, sounds kind of cocky and stuff, but man, he's, he's got it down as far as just the sales process. He does a lot of uh, property sales. He was worked with like car dealerships. He like overcoming objections. They have this thing called Cardone University, which it, like teaches you how to really get through with communication objections. Anyway, I, I, I studied it and went through it before because I heard a lot about him and I think he's got a lot of useful stuff. He actually spoke as a keynote speaker at a chiropractic seminar I went to one oh, time. Yeah. Which nice. was cool. He's got a crazy story. Like he was like a drug addict, like his dad died at a young age, bunch of siblings and he became extremely successful. And he, he was like on heroin and stuff. And, and so it, it was one of those, he has a very addictive personality. So he turned it to something good and used like the addictive personality for sales and success. There you go. But something that he talks about is how many times it takes before a sale goes through mm -hmm. or before like you accomplish something and it's multiple, multiple times. So that's something else to, to encourage them today is like, if you go in and you don't get it set up right now, that's not a failure. Yeah. That's getting that first step out of the way because you have to get on average three, four, five, six, seven steps out of the way before you get to that eighth, ninth or 10th step. That is the yes. Mm -hmm. How he talks about it is like getting the door slammed in your face. Like you have to go and get the door slammed in your face like seven or eight times before you get the one that says yes. Mm -hmm. So you might as well go and get those done. You know, you yep. like, like you can't let that defeat you and be like, oh, no one's saying yes to me. It's like, that's how it works. Yeah. And the, the people that say yes, make up for the people that said no. Yeah. And that, and, and that's just how yeah. it works. And, 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 and that's why people, you know, like across the board, a lot of people 
can't hang doing that sort of thing because it's like that rejection is just too much for them. You take it personal. You take it personal and they don't understand it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Crucial. Crucial. Okay. All right. Any closing wisdom? I don't think so. No wisdom? No wisdom. No No wisdom today. All right. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Make sure if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the podcast. Is that how you do it? I don't know. Subscribe to the YouTube channel at the very least. We, we just recently started boosting this thing up again, so we don't have a ton of subscribers at the moment because we're trying to get this thing out now. So subscribe and share it with all your chiropractic brethren. And then uh, subscribe to the podcast too and listen to it. And hopefully, you know, you listen to this like on the way driving into the clinic or when you're getting a pedicure or <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, whenever. Uh, but ho- hopefully this is helpful. We try to share just a, a lot of ideas and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that we do. Danny comes over here in person. So if you're not watching this on video, she's actually sitting here. We have a podcast set up in my home office. She comes over here. We're doing this every week. We've done it consistently every week since we started. It was her good idea to do this instead of doing podcasts how we did before, which we're still good, but we're putting more effort into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're doing this because we want to engage more chiropractors Mm -hmm. out there. All right, so with that said, we will run the outro. Check out, if if, if you're not familiar with Move Now University, we teach you how to how to not just implement functional movement into a chiropractic practice, but it's tons of just systems and protocols that make the clinic run smoother, the staff understand their position, their job, and it it just helps everything work beautifully together. Okay. And you got Danny's our doctor support. She's our office manager in the clinic. She's balanced and juggled a lot of things to make this thing work and she works with chiropractors every week helping them in their clinic as well Mm -hmm. okay so this is what we love doing we are looking for committed clinics that want to join our team our program and be part of this this is a movement that we're trying to build and so if you're interested check out to find out more check out demo.movenowyou.com you can watch a it's an older, but it's still relevant, 30-minute pre-recorded demo of like behind the scenes of what we do. We've added stuff to it. I need to update that video here sometime soon. And you can reach out and you can schedule something and chat with Danny. And then if it needs to you know, escalate more, we can schedule something where I can chat with you too. She's our primary person. She can answer about 99.9% of any questions out there. And uh, we can find out if this is a good fit for you and show you how to, how to transition into this. I mean, especially now with the uncertain times and what's going on. Man, functional movement and having systems is, I think, is that much more important. And it really ties into multiple levels of work, whether you do total self pay, you do insurance, you do personal injury. It's huge for personal injury. So it's super, super helpful. It's given me a lot of direction and purpose in practice, practicing like this. So I, I, I really like it. And I, I, could, I can't imagine practicing any other way yeah. at this point. So anyway. Thanks for joining us. We'll run the outro so you hear some more links. We got a book too that we wrote a while back so you can get that book if you listen to the um, the link in the outro. So listen up. Want more Move Now secrets? If so, then go get your copy of my best-selling book and watch my 30-minute behind-the-scenes Move Now demo. My book is called Move Well Secrets and you can get your free copy at book.movenowyou.com and watch the 30-minute demo of our exclusive doctor training portal at demo.movenowyou.com. With these two resources, you'll find my top 22 secrets that we've used to build one of the smoothest running, results producing, and super profitable exercise departments within a chiropractic clinic in the entire profession. 